Welcome back guys, today we're taking a look at 2011 horror film The Human Centipede 3. The film begins by showing the ending scenes of The Human Centipede 2. The camera shows us a warden and his accountant watching the ending credits on TV. The warden, by the name tag of William Boss, puts out a cigar and calls the movie's complete trash. He then lashes out on a secretary who's cutting his nails. Boss scolds her in a sadistic manner and sends her out. Just then, he receives a call about Code 6 and Block 4. The scenario now shows a prison in a wide open desert where Boss and his accountant walk through the halls to Block 4, while all the prisoners stand on the edges of their cells. They proceed to the inner cells where a prisoner teases Boss by calling him a Nazi. Moreover, the tattooed prisoner threatens to rape him till death. Boss notices his number as Prisoner 297 and remarks that he'll be dealt with later. On their way out, they come across a bloodied policeman and it's known that Prisoner 178 did this. In his pure anguish, Boss walks over to the restrained, burly prisoner and uses his ruthlessness to break his elbow in a vicious manner. The guy starts howling in pain while Boss walks away in sheer satisfaction. Meanwhile, his accountant keeps on blabbering about rising medical expenses due to his never-ending torture. Back in the hall, Boss stops in the middle and starts shooting his revolver like a maniac until he drops to the floor, demanding respect from everyone. Meanwhile, the prisoners all around him mock him and his methods. The scene then shifts to his office, where Boss wraps a Sigma monomer around his wrist while his accountant checks on the pretty-looking secretary. She sheds tears in her room while a box gets delivered for Mr. Boss. She gets annoyed by the creepy accountant staring at her and closes the door on him while Boss gets enraged due to the high blood pressure of 16120. In the meantime, the accountant, Dwight Butler, presents the DVDs of the Human Centipede films as a solution, but Boss doesn't give him an ear and scolds him. Afterwards, he drinks whiskey and presents the idea of bringing back medieval torture methods, but Dwight simply denies them. Boss keeps on fantasizing the horrific torments when suddenly the secretary comes in with the delivery. Boss sends her out immediately, but her whooping beauty catches his eye and he calls her back. She hands him the package and leaves. Boss opens it with enthusiasm and brings out a jar. In the jar, he takes out dried clitorises and chews them while stating that they're for unbelievable strength. At that moment, he receives a threatening call from the prisoners and Boss starts to freak out. He loses himself like a lunatic under pressure and starts stating they're coming for him. He closes the door and hides underneath his table while being scared to death. In the meantime, Dwight calls the guard and it's revealed that the prisoner just pranked Boss. Just then, the secretary barges in stating Boss's appointment for the medieval survey with Dr. Jones with him lashing out in pure anguish. The scene then shifts to the hospital ward where prisoners are under medical care. While in his cabin, Boss forces the doctor to give the statement that he is in perfect health, despite being under hypertension. Frightened to the bone, the doctor affirms. Later, the camera pans to a cell where the pranking prisoner is strapped to a wooden table. Boss walks around him and menacingly threatens the guy. In the meantime, police officers arrive with buckets of water, but Boss angrily sends them back to bring boiling water. Just then, the secretary named Daisy walks in and states that Governor Hughes will be here in 20 minutes. Boss catcalls him and proceeds to molest Daisy while advising her to let him touch her so that the governor can be sued for sexual harassment. After she leaves, the policemen arrive with the boiling water and Boss starts to torment. He puts a towel over the prisoner's face while pouring the boiling water over him mercilessly. The guy shrieks in agony while Boss chants the Nazi slogans. After the torture, he takes off the sticky cloth underneath and the blistered, burned skin of the prisoner is visible. On the other hand, Governor Hughes arrives at the prison and walks in the warden's office. As he sits on the seat, Boss swallows his pride and fury and offers the governor some Dominican cigars, but he rejects it. Boss taunts him, but the governor simply smiles in return and blames him for damaging his election year. Furthermore, he demands a valuable change, otherwise both Boss and his accountant will be fired. With that, he leaves and Boss shrieks in fury and aspiration behind him. His assistants try to calm him down, but his blood pressure peaks. Under the frustration, he admonishingly offers to castrate his prisoners and orders Dwight to take them all outside in the scorching 120 degrees heat. Once out, Boss emerges over the guard tower with a loudspeaker, but the prisoners start clamoring. As Boss announces the horrifying castration penalty, the commotion dies out and he announces the first candidate will be tattooed prisoner 297. As he gets taken to the special cell, Boss torches a knife to make it red hot. He hysterically approaches the prisoner, who seems unfazed. Boss starts laughing maniacally, and the prisoner is planted across the wall. As the policemen hold him from struggling, Boss mercilessly slashes his ball sack and cuts out the testicles, which makes the prisoner go limp under the excruciating pain. The freak then fondles them in his hands like a happy child and hands them over to Dwight to get them roasted for his lunch. Afterwards, the sadistic warden covers his face with the prisoner's blood and cherishes the moment. Later, he pleasures himself with Daisy between his legs. Dwight gets angry while Boss reaches the climax and orders the girl to swallow everything. She refuses, but Boss reminds her of the favor he gave her father by releasing him from the prison. 
With that, she follows the filthy order and takes a bite out of the salted clitorises. Afterwards, she leaves and in comes the policeman with roasted balls for boss's dinner. The swine savors the food with extreme delight, while Dwight almost throws up. In the meantime, Boss locates the human centipede DVDs on his desk and lashes out on Dwight once again. Suddenly, he receives a call that Prisoner 297 has awakened. Boss happily runs to the medical ward where he taunts the burned prisoner and proceeds to break Prisoner 178's fingers as well. Afterwards, he advances towards Prisoner 297 while Dr. Jones states that he owes Boss big time for letting him work here without his license. On the other hand, Boss wakes the prisoner up, but the guy lashes out at him and threatens him once again. Dwight remarks that he knew crastation wouldn't work, and that enrages Boss to the extent where he begins to strangle the prisoner. Ultimately, the guy gives up on his breath, and the doctors rush in to resuscitate him. After a few attempts, his heartbeat resumes, but Boss repeats the same torment, but this time lets him go before he dies. As he leaves in a daze, Dwight discusses the human centipede with Dr. Jones. The scene now shifts to the office where Boss walks in completely drunk. He sits in the chair and laments over the uselessness of castration. That makes Dwight burst out in frustration and he shouts about the effectiveness of the human centipede. No financial issues, no fights, no more disrespect. But the boss doesn't listen to him and states that he has no time for that. Dwight tries to prove his argument and states that the director, Tom Six, will be here, but boss bellows in fury and fires Dwight. After their heated argument, Dwight leaves the office before handing Daisy a handkerchief for her tears. In the meantime, Boss starts abusing Dwight and walks around madly like a drunkard. Afterwards, he goes to the guard tower and abuses every prisoner racially and in every sense possible. Later, he walks to the cafeteria and finishes his whiskey bottle. Suddenly, out of nowhere, prisoners start surrounding him. As the inmates approach him threateningly, he whines for mercy by stating his medical illness. Unfortunately, no one listens to him and prisoner 297 stabs a blade in his kidney until Boss starts bleeding out. Afterwards, he proceeds to penetrate and rape him monstrously while the rest chant death rape. As the pain exceeds, the prisoner finishes inside him, Boss suddenly wakes up with a jolt and finds him safe and sound in his office. After getting a sigh of relief, he stands up and receives a call stating that Tom Six is on the gate. Boss orders to let him inside. Meanwhile, Dwight also returns and Tom enters Daisy's office who asks for an autograph. After the introduction, he proceeds to the warden's office where Dr. Jones joins them as well. The discussion starts and Dwight presents an illustration of the human centipede. The talk progresses and Tom confirms that the process is 100% medically accurate and possible. The group then concludes that this phenomenon will be executed and Boss stands up in triumph, imagining the glory and fame behind it. He immediately puts Tom in charge of the operation and asks to get into action right away. In the meantime, another idea pops into Boss's mind to show the prisoners the film beforehand. Dwight goes against the opinion, but Boss stays adamant. The results prove disastrous, as the prisoners get exasperated with filthy and violent related films. Furthermore, fuel is added to the fire as Boss dictates that the same process will be experimented on them. That enrages the prisoners and all hell breaks loose. The prisoners get out of control and wreak havoc around the prison. Boss and Dwight scamper away to their office while the prisoners follow them upstairs. One of them charges at Daisy and hurts her brutally, meanwhile the others start breaking Boss's door. Due to the sheer fright and terror, Boss escapes out the window and drops dozens of feet down on the ground while Dwight calls for special forces. In the meantime, the prisoners manage to break the door down, but special forces arrive just in the nick of time and Dwight is saved. Later, he proceeds to look for Boss who's huddled behind a tree with injured legs. Dwight states that Daisy is badly injured, but Boss takes no notice and shouts at him to bring the medics for himself. The scene now shifts to the cells where Boss shoots every prisoner with a sedation rifle and has them taken away for surgical procedures. He dances around in sheer happiness and menacing satisfaction and proceeds to read out the surgical process to everyone in the medical ward. After ending the speech, he analyses the victims and comes to a patient with Crohn's disease, which results in constant diarrhea. Boss beams in joy as he states that the tattooed prisoner will be attached behind the diseased guy. Furthermore, they proceed to a victim with stoma. As his rectum is sewn shut, he excretes from a hole in his stomach. The prisoner laughs, as he'll be no use to him, but Boss thrusts his revolver in his wound and kills him with a burst. The internal filth is thrown everywhere. Just then, another prisoner is brought forward who is also killed by Boss. After the carnage, Dwight requests to go see Daisy. The scene now shifts to Daisy's bed, who's in a coma with a brutalized face. The vicious barbarian warden gets aroused and proceeds to have intercourse with her in her devastated state, while Dwight cringes in pain and sorrow. After a while, the camera pans back to the warden's office, where Boss and Dwight start to mimic Governor Hughes. In the meantime, he receives a call about Tom's arrival, and the scene then shows us the three of them roaming the prison cells. They approach a prisoner who's already eating his own shit. 
Tom throws up while Boss shoots the prisoner as he'll feel no trouble being part of the centipede. The group now proceeds to the surgical ward, where Boss observes the stitching process in amazement. As the prisoner's lips get attached to the anus, Boss starts dancing in triumph and victory. The group then moves on to a section where the amputations are being carried out. Tom throws up again on the ugly sight while Boss cheers. Dwight is horrendously astounded at the process, but Boss simply drags him away. On the other hand, Governor Hughes arrives at the prison and enters the office to find both of them utterly pleased with themselves. He orders the release from duty, but Boss states they found the solution to the problem and they escort him outside in the scorching heat, where he loses his mind upon seeing a gigantic human centipede made out of all the prisoners. Dwight explains the benefits and the savings of millions of dollars while the governor watches everything in horror. Just then, we witness that Daisy is also a part of the centipede, but Boss takes no notice and takes the governor away to another horrific site where they come to see a human caterpillar compromising the prisoners with life and death sentences. Horrifically, all of them had their limbs amputated. The tour goes on as Boss takes him to the ward to meet a prisoner whose sentence just ended. He was detached from the centipede with only a few marks on the lips. As he's now free, Boss sends him away. Unfortunately, instead of embracing their idea, the governor scolds them for being inhumane and leaves the facility stating that it'll be the death penalty for them. Boss suddenly loses all his morale while Dwight apologizes and starts crying. Boss proceeds to commit suicide, but Dr. Jones arrives just in time, beaming with excitement. Boss shoots him right away and kills him on the spot. On the other hand, the governor reconsiders the whole situation and returns back. Just when Boss is about to shoot Dwight in the head, the governor suddenly walks in and approves their idea, stating it's the best solution for dropping the crime rate and it might even get him elected as president. The flurries of joy run through their bodies as Dwight claims that it was his brilliant idea and proceeds to hug Boss in merriment. Boss agrees, but the sadistic warden shoots his accountant in the head and puts an end to his life. In the final moments of the film, we see the human centipede sprawled across the yard while William Boss stands at the post screaming, shouting like a madman, and with that, everything fades out. Thanks for watching guys!